Hello. Thanks for joining us for home worship on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. Today's sermon is uh, from the sermon series, We Make the Road by Walking. It's entitled, Surprising People. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, the announcement to the shepherds. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them, and the Lord's glory shone all around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this, the fourth Sunday in Advent, December 19th, 2021. To complete our nativity scene, including Herod, we throw in some shepherds. Shepherds who were also marginalized, the youngest son of most families, the men who were not necessarily suitable for marriage or any other kind of career. And here in this story, God aligns with the poorest among us. But it's verse 15 I'd like to focus on. When the angels departed, they looked at each other and decided to find the manger. I dare say there's something to read between the lines. They might have had to catch their breath, you think? Maybe even wipe the vomit from their face, or one or more might have had a heart attack or a stroke. God doubled down on the angel show. Saying they were surprised is an understatement. Luke tells us they were terrified. But I think there is a method in the apparent madness of scaring the living daylights out of these shepherds. Here's what researchers on surprises say about our human surprise reaction and what they mean for us. So when we are truly surprised, we freeze. This is my surprise face. A surprise stops us in our tracks, commands all of our attention, and focuses it into the present moment. And next, that's an instant, next, our emotions intensify, intensify and the, the researchers say to 400 times the normal intensity of emotions. And once we learn that this is what's happening, we can use the times that we are surprised to learn from them. Because essentially, surprise is a way of our brains and bodies telling us that we're wrong. Think about it. When we are truly surprised, we are going along, thinking, expecting things to be one way when it suddenly changes. Surprise is an alert that tells you, hey, this is something new, something you didn't know yet. And we all have a choice. All of our attention is focused on this new thing, this surprise. We can deny that we have been surprised and pretend even to ourselves that we already had this information or we can accept and embrace the surprise, allow ourselves to be taken by it, and turn to wonder. Wonder is where we grow, where we connect with others, and where we learn. 
We take the thing that took us by surprise and we use it to gain more knowledge and learn and grow. To do this, we have to give up on denial and let ourselves be taken by surprise. So put yourself in the shoes of the shepherds that day. Shepherding was a despised occupation. At the time in the first century, shepherds were scorned as shiftless, dishonest people who grazed their flocks on other people's lands. Luke describes the appearance of these angels in three different statements. So an angel stood before them, and then the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. And in the next moment, it doubles down, and there is an assembly of angels singing and making a ruckus. The darkness of the night is showered in brilliance. It dramatically illustrates the contrast between the humble setting of the birth of Jesus in a manger, stable stall, and the glory of the angelic announcement filling the night sky with light. And, and who is this show for? Who is this glorious invitation made to? The lowliest among us. When a surprise is good, when it's a good surprise, that emotional it intensity that we feel is actually joy. No doubt the shepherds were surprised by the angel and then by the glory of the Lord shining all around them. And then when the first angel being joined by the heavenly host singing and praising God and, like I said before, making a ruckus, you know, there's nothing like this in all of scripture. And it was all for those shepherds. God was so concerned that these degenerates be included in this important event. So concerned was God that God sent the invitation of a lifetime. And that's surprising too. Not just that they were surprised by what they saw and what they heard and what was going to happen, but that God did it in this way to us should be surprised. This story should make all people stop in their tracks. It should grab your attention and help you focus on what is right now in front of you, bringing you into the present moment. It should intensify your emotions to the point of absolute joy. And then it should teach you. Teach you that the least and the lost and those whom we would not like to sit next to on an airplane, whom we would not like to have as a fellow member of our country clubs, those are the very same people God made sure were present at Jesus' birth. And this new knowledge should change the way we see people who live in our world with us, who walk among us but are kept invisible by societal norms and gated communities. This surprising story should tell us something new about Jesus and God's desire for creation. This year, I hope you will let yourself be taken by surprise and live in the joy of the living God who is now among us. God bless you. Amen.